Hardcore mode is the most difficult game mode Minecraft has to offer. With only one life and the game locked to the hardest difficulty, there's no room for mistakes. I've decided to take this challenge to the next level by placing an additional restriction. Anything that makes the armor bar appear is not allowed. Without armor, I'll have to rely on skill and game knowledge to survive. If I die, the series ends. My name is Trentacles, and this is my journey. If I want to survive without armor, I'm going to need more than just diamond tools and golden apples. I'm going to need some of the most powerful items in the game. Potions. The only problem is, the two items needed to start brewing potions are both found in the Nether Fortress, one of the most dangerous places in the game. If I want to survive the fortress, I'm going to need to make some preparations. The first stage of my preparation takes place in the barren cold of the mountains. I started by constructing a cobblestone outpost. Once that was finished, I placed a bunch of cauldrons outside. If you're wondering why anyone would ever need 13 cauldrons, don't worry, I will explain. You see, a bucket of water is an extremely useful item, which is why I always keep one in my hotbar. The only problem is, I can't exactly use it in the nether. Fortunately, version 1.17 added a substitute that can be used in the nether powdered snow. Like a bucket of water, a bucket of powdered snow can be used to stop fall damage as well as extinguish yourself if you're on fire. However, the only way for me to obtain powdered snow is to set out some cauldrons and wait for it to start snowing, which will cause the cauldrons to slowly fill with snow. Once a cauldron is full of snow, I can use a bucket on it to obtain a bucket of powdered snow. With the cauldron set, all I needed to do was wait. My original plan was to pass the time by fishing, but of course I forgot to bring a fishing rod, so I did a bit of exploring instead. Before long, I was able to find a fishing rod in some ocean ruins, as well as a map to some buried treasure. While searching for the treasure, I was attacked by an army of drowned, but I was able to escape and secure the loot. Nice! Look at all this loot. While traveling back to my outpost, the sun began to set, but just before I was going to sleep, it started raining. If I were to sleep, the weather could clear up in the morning, meaning I would have to wait even longer for my snow cauldrons to be filled. So instead, I decided to travel through the night. There's the shack. Perfect. Now we just hide inside the shack. Once I made it back to my outpost, I waited out the rest of the storm, and after it passed, I went outside to check on my cauldrons. I found that two of the cauldrons were completely full, meaning I was able to obtain my first two buckets of powdered snow. With the powdered snow in my possession, it was time to move on to the next stage of my preparation. Picking flowers. But I wasn't after just any flowers. I needed alliums, which only grow in the flower forest biome. Thus, I set out to find a flower forest. I traveled for days, across mountains and through valleys, through dense forests and open plains. Until one day, as I approached a village, I was intercepted by a roving band of pillagers. Oh, hello there. Leader. Oh, almost. Yes. There we 
go. Pillagers have been dealt with. After dealing with the pillagers, I continued my search for the flower forest. Just as I was about to give up, I finally found it. Is that? Is that a flower forest? Yes! Alliums! Yes! Yes! Alliums have been acquired. With the Alliums acquired, I was ready to move on to the final stage of my preparations. The last thing I wanted before venturing into the Nether was to enchant my pickaxe with Fortune 3. This won't make the Nether any less dangerous, but it will allow me to get a lot more gold from mining the ores. I decided to go the route of using villagers rather than an enchantment table. I started by crafting a lectern and trapping a villager in one of the houses. I could then repeatedly destroy and replace the lectern until the villager offers the enchanted book that I want. I did this for a couple minutes until the villager had a mending book, so I decided to trade with him and lock it in since mending is very difficult to get without trading. I then crafted another lectern and restarted the process with a different villager. After about 10 minutes, the villager finally offered Fortune 2, and I decided to lock it in. This meant I would have to get two books and combine them to make Fortune 3. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough emeralds to buy both books, so I had to farm a bunch of wheat to sell to the farmer. Eventually, I was able to get all the emeralds needed to purchase the second book. I returned to my desert home and crafted an anvil, using it to add Fortune 3 to my pickaxe. All that was left to do was build the portal and venture into the nether. I grabbed the supplies I had gathered and used the alliums and mushrooms to make some suspicious stews. Suspicious stews grant various potion effects based on which flower is used to make them. The reason I wanted alliums so much is because suspicious stews made with alliums grant a few seconds of fire resistance, which is a very useful thing to have in the nether. I used some cobblestone to build a portal shack, and once completed, I constructed my nether portal. The portal took me to a crimson forest, one of the more dangerous biomes of the nether. Luckily, there weren't any piglins or hoglins nearby, so I quickly constructed another portal shack, this one on the nether side. Once I completed the portal shack, I started looking around for some gold to mine. Another crossbow guy here. Good night. Oh god, there's a hog. Oh. Uh... Oh, that's not piercing. After gathering some gold, I trapped a piglin and started bartering with it. After a bunch of trades, I got the item I wanted, a potion of fire resistance. This potion gives 3 minutes of fire resistance, which is a huge improvement over the 4 seconds I would get from suspicious stews. Now that I had a fire resistance potion, I was ready to search for the fortress. Luckily, I was able to find it without much difficulty. I cautiously made my way inside. Okay, nether wart secured, that's good. Okay, we got the nether wart room. Full shield. Oh. Okay, obviously they can get in through there, so let's block that off. Wither skeleton, you should murder. Oh! Well, alright then. It's seen me.
Upon finding the blaze spawners, I drank my fire resistance potion, rendering me immune to the blaze's fireballs. I then set to work closing off the spawner in order to build a safe area to kill the blazes. Once my blaze farm was complete, I started collecting a bunch of blaze rods. Once I had enough, all I had to worry about was getting out of the nether in one piece. Piercing is a little bit scary. Oh, there it is. There's my there's my cobblestone box. Safety. Back in the safety of the overworld, I made a small nether wart farm, then got to work brewing potions. First, I used the gas tiers I had obtained to make regeneration potions. I wanted to make instant health potions next, but I realized I didn't have any glowstone to make them stronger, so I had to make another trip into the nether. Ooh. Oh. After securing some glowstone, I brewed some instant health potions, but I was still missing an ingredient I needed, magma cream. Magma cream is used to brew fire resistance potions, and it can be obtained in two ways. The first way is to kill magma cubes, which is very dangerous. The less dangerous way is to craft it from blaze powder and slime balls. The only problem is, I don't have any slime balls. The only way to obtain slime balls is by killing slimes, which means I needed to find a swamp. So I set out once again in search of a swamp, and naturally I got sidetracked a few times along the way. Shipwreck. Buried treasure. That might be really nice. Let's see what we can get here. Some moss blocks, interesting. Some carrots, probably not very useful. Nice. Oh, a ruined portal. <laughs> Useless. I don't have anything with silk touch. And there it is. Wait, this is a desert temple. Another golden apple. Multi shot. I might want that. Wait, what is this?
Oh, oh! It's an amethyst geode, and well, now it's half blown up, but nice. Eventually, I was able to find a swamp, and I climbed on top of a tree to wait until nightfall. As the sun went down, I started looking around for slimes. Alright, we got a couple slime balls, nice. One over here. Very nice. Okay, there's just too many skeletons in between me and that slime. Sometimes I forget how good bows are. Alright, got 12 slime balls. Not bad. Not a bad start. With 12 slime balls in my inventory, I headed back to my desert home. Once I got back home, I brewed some 8 minute fire resistance potions. With the power of potions at my disposal, I am now ready for some endgame content.